Today we're looking at a poem from the Love and Relationships Cluster. We're looking at Walking Away by Cecil Day Lewis. This poem is about a father's memory. He remembers watching his son walk away to play his first ever game of football. And although this seems like a really simple moment, it actually symbolizes how difficult it is for parents to let children go into adulthood, especially when you know of all the dangers that are out there. It's written from the viewpoint of the parent directly addressing his son. Let's read it. It is 18 years ago, almost to the day, a sunny day with leaves just turning. The touchline's new rule since I watched you play your first game of football. Then, like a satellite wrenched from its orbit, go drifting away behind a scatter of boys. I can see you walking away from me towards the school with the pathos of a half-fledged thing set free into a wilderness the gait of one who finds no path where the path should be. That hesitant figure eddying away like a winged seed loosened from its parent stem has something I never quite grasped to convey about nature's give and take, the small, the scorching ordeals which fire one's irresolute clay. I have had worse partings, but none that so gnaws at my mind still. Perhaps it is roughly saying what God alone could perfectly show. How selfhood begins with a walking away and love is proved in the letting go. Right, we're going to work our way through the poem line by line and figure out exactly what's going on. And along the way, I'm also going to analyze some of my favorite juicy quotations. And what I mean by juicy quotations is quotations that have interesting language devices, if they've got words that you can zoom into, so that if this poem comes up in your exam, you have lots of interesting things to say about it. Let's start from the beginning. It is 18 years ago, almost to the day. Now the reference to the exact time sets the scene for the speaker's memory and shows that this day clearly left a great impression on him. Despite how much time has passed, he can clearly remember the exact day, conveying the significance of this memory for him. It says a sunny day with leaves just turning, the touchline's new rules. The reference to leaves just turning indicates this is a liminal stage, which means the beginning of a transition, a shift from summer, sunny day, to autumn. This could be a metaphor for the change coming in the speaker's life or even his son growing up. Usually autumn signifies change or decay or death. So this clearly demonstrates his tone of regret or loss as he thinks about this moment again. He says, since I watched you play your first game of football, then like a satellite wrenched from its orbit, go drifting away. Let's analyze this little bit. The speaker directly addresses his son and specifically raises the first game of football, which typically marks a coming of age moment in a father son relationship. The verb watched conveys almost a sense of helplessness. You're just watching. He feels left out like an outsider. And the simile, like a satellite wrenched from its orbit, go drifting away, shows how unnatural it felt to the father to watch his son being wrenched away from him before he was ready to let him go. The fact that it's leaving its orbit could imply it's leaving its natural habitat and safety the world it has always known to go into a more scary and unpredictable world. And the verb wrenched also connotes violence, as if he blames the world of grown-ups for taking his son away from him prematurely. Or, I guess alternative interpretation, he could be blaming his son for choosing to follow his friends after the match rather than returning to his father. And he does it so easily. He drifts, easy. And that idea is further reinforced through the direct address you, which has quite an accusatory tone. Also, a satellite 
orbits a planet. So it also shows the boy's previous dependency on his father and his constant presence around him. Structurally, if we look at structure, the caesura, the pauses throughout those two lines, represents the boundaries between them, emphasizing the child's desire for independence as he grows up. And it says, behind a scatter of boys, I can see you walking away from me towards the school with the pathos of a half-fledged thing set free. I wanna analyze this quotation too. The father and the son are being separated emotionally and physically due to the scatter of boys. And scatter creates an image of disorder and chaos. And that is heightening the boy's vulnerability in a crowd. There's like a whole scatter of them, all of them, and that one boy is going into it. The juxtaposition away from me and towards, away towards, highlights a sense of loss for the father, but a newfound purpose for the son. He is losing something, but he's going towards something. The father stands watching his son walking away, but he notices the son's fear. Or is it the father's own fears that he is projecting? The word fledged means a young bird that has just become capable of flying. And the fact that the boy is described as only half fledged suggests that he's not quite ready yet for this independence. He's not ready to fully fly towards growing up yet. There's also, if you look at the fact that he's being called a thing, when we compare a human to an object, that's called cremomorphism. And calling the little boy a thing makes him seem fragile, something that's easily breakable. And pathos means extreme pity and the father sympathizes with the son, but also sees that the son feels like he has been set free from the cage of his father's protection. And there's a conflict between needing to set the child free, but wanting to protect him at the same time showing how difficult it is to be a parent and demonstrating that this poem is more about the father's pain than the son's. Into a wilderness, the gate of one who finds no path where the path should be. The hyperbolic metaphor describing the school as wilderness shows how concerned the father is about sending his child into such a dangerous setting. However, it could also represent the boy's future wilderness, an unexplored place that's full of adventure as well as challenges. But for me, wilderness is quite a threatening word choice, which reflects the speaker's fears that his son is not gonna be able to survive without his guidance. And so he justifies the fact that his son still needs him in order to stay safe. It says that hesitant figure eddying away like a winged seed loosened from its parent stem. So the son's vulnerability is shown in the adjective hesitant, firstly, because he's unsure how to navigate this terrifying new world. And the verb eddying is really interesting because an eddy is a current that moves in a circular motion in the sea. So it shows how awkward the son's movements are as he is navigating this new world and he's learning to find his own feet and learning to find his own identity. The simile, like a winged seed loosened from its parent stem, describes the boy as tiny, a little seed. He's helplessly drifting away from his father. The fact that these images are both part of the natural world highlights though, that this process is both natural and inevitable. It's like nature, it's just gonna happen. And the father resigns to this thought, although his worries are really clear. The speaker finds it difficult to grasp or convey how he feels about nature's give and take. And that basically just means he can't put it into words, but he recognizes that this sacrifice is expected from parents. It's part of the cycle of life. He then goes on to describe the powerful image of the small, the scorching ordeals which fire one's irresolute clay. I know this is a complicated quotation. However, if you are looking for that grade nine, it's a really good one to analyze. Let's talk about it, try and follow me. The fire imagery here is a metaphor for suffering. So when it says scorching ordeals, it means the difficult challenges that you face when you become an adult. 
but the dad has realized that the same fire is required to turn soft clay into hard irresolute clay so if he wants his son to be resilient and tough and hard he has to allow him to walk through the fire therefore the father should accept that he will have to let his son experience some pain and trials although his instinct is to protect him in order for his son to have a successful life the metaphor of clay makes the son seem really impressionable as if he can be molded into any shape and this clever point could also be a biblical reference as according to the bible god made us in clay and therefore the father feels that he is creating or reshaping a new person by allowing his son to walk away into the journey towards adulthood he says i have had worse partings but none that so gnaws at my mind still perhaps it is roughly the violence in the verb gnaws signifies how hard the father found this separation and how much anguish it caused him so much so that he still thinks about it now so many years later he says saying what god alone could perfectly show how selfhood begins with a walking away and love is proved in the letting go in those final three lines the speaker reaches the understanding that selfhood begins with walking away so he realizes that individuality and independence can only be encouraged by allowing the child to make the first steps away he also thinks about god he thinks about god's ultimate sacrifice in christianity god also let his son jesus descend from heaven to earth ultimately losing his life and in the same way he needs to let his son go too for the greater good and by identifying with the actions of god and saying oh, i get it now god did the same thing the speaker is able to feel at peace with his inability to protect his son as much as he wants to and accept the natural cycle of life now structurally walking away is written in four stanzas that are all the same length and that kind of control and fixed structure symbolizes how the father struggles to let go and wants to hold on to his son's childhood and the safety that he provides and then there's caesura in enjambment which contrasts with that and that demonstrates the futility of this desire it's pointless you can try and control things as much as you like but he's going to be free and that enjambment caesura kind of mimics the movement of the son walking away from his father Whew. there we go we've got some language analysis we've got some structure analysis however if you want that grade seven to nine in your exam you can't just analyze language and structure you also need to bring in context and that means explain what was happening during the time this poem was written or tell me something about the poet's life and then link that to the writer's message why did the poet therefore write this poem what did they want the reader to learn some interesting context points for walking away are the poet's own mother died when he was very young and he was brought up by his father this poem is actually about the poet's son sean from his first marriage and therefore it's very autobiographical in its tone sean went to boarding school in somerset from the age of seven and the original poem is subtitled for sean and the poem considers the effect that separation can have on a still developing parent-child relationship and there you have it a full analysis of walking away i hope you found this video helpful if you did give it a like and please don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this series